I am an atheist. Yes, I understand the optics of a person like me making that statement at the beginning of a YouTube video, and I promise this isn't the opening to some edgelord rant about how Christianity co-opted Easter from the pagan religions and religion is an opiate for the masses, etc. That's not really what I do here. All I want to do is talk about my own religious path. So yes, I'm an atheist, but I wasn't raised that way. I would say I probably followed a pretty standard, gradual evolution to that stance. Prior to accepting the fact of God's non-existence, I described myself as agnostic. That was in my very early twenties, and I was still very much holding on to the ideas and philosophies I was raised on, which seems like a pretty common age for that sort of transition. The cliché of an on-the-fence Christian teen going to college, sliding into agnosticism naturally before professors in college reading leads them to complete atheism, a song as old as rhyme. I didn't go to college, but I did go through a period of strong interest in reading about other religions and opposing philosophies, partly fueled by my interest in conspiracy theories at the time and their attempts to define a grand unifying principle that explains how everything ever thought is true because of aliens or whatever, and partly because that was just the path I had set myself on years prior. My time as a self-described agnostic was pretty brief, but not as brief as the time I spent sincerely attempting to make Satanism work as my official religious preference. And I should clarify there are essentially two main types of Satanism. The first is largely based on the works of Anton LaVey and Aleister Crowley, which has a lot of interesting philosophical ideas, but as you get more into it, it becomes bogged down with pagan rituals and other more traditional spiritual elements. The second is the more modern Satanic Temple version that retains some of those LaVey elements and certainly still holds on to the practice of rituals, but is much more focused on political activism. I still endorse much of what the modern Satanic Temple stands for, but it was the books by LaVey that I was following prior to agnosticism. The decision to explore the left-hand path was mostly reactionary. It was something I got into after leaving my first wife, and the experience of my time with her really made me resent the Christian-based teachings I grew up with. Particularly, the idea that marriage is forever, takes a lot of effort to make work, divorce is a sin, and that we should always turn the other cheek and offer forgiveness. These may be noble goals to some people, but some situations simply do not deserve that much emotional leeway. Interestingly, despite my parents and other family members being heavily critical of previous divorces that had occurred in our family tree, I received no pushback when announcing my own intention to dissolve the union that God had brought together. Adopting Satanism was a natural reaction because it was billed as being the opposite of Christianity, Christianity being the religion I was raised in, primarily Presbyterian to be specific. I've mentioned this in plenty of my other videos, but my parents are both conservative Christians and raised my sister and I to be such as well. As a family, we were all in. Both my sister and I attended a private Christian school through the highest grades available. I left after sixth grade because that's all the further they offered at the time, and my sister continued through eighth before switching to public school with me. Except for a couple of years where my parents were trying to find a new church they liked, we attended Sunday school and regular church services every week in addition to church youth group meetings and activities. My parents even taught Sunday school, were sometimes leaders of the youth group, and were involved in the church council. Clearly, religion was something that took up a lot of my time and space in my head for a majority of my youth. I feel the need to specify, though, that while I was raised in a very religious environment, it wasn't a fanatical one. We participated in all of the above, and if there was a Christian version of some type of media, that was the version we were offered first. But we weren't a family that protested abortion clinics, though we were taught to be firmly against the idea of abortion, of course. And our church wasn't the sort that practiced prophecy or speaking in tongues. So I was listening to alternative Christian music radio, watching Christian video series like McGee and Me or Bible Adventures, reading books by Tim LaHaye and, of course, the Bible, and playing Bible-based NES games, but we weren't so deep that I couldn't also listen to country music, 
watch Fox Kids or Disney Afternoon cartoons, read Goosebumps or Encyclopedia Brown, and play any other NES game. As I said at the beginning, I'm an atheist, and because of that, you might reasonably assume I was one of those children that questioned everything and was rebellious when it came to my parents' teachings, but that wasn't the case. I really was completely invested in all of the above. Even if left to my own devices, I would generally choose something Christian-related for my entertainment. I played the hell out of those Bible-themed NES games, and the alternative Christian music radio station was one of the first bits of media I discovered and enjoyed on my own. I flipped through my mom's catalog of Christian novels and non-fiction books every month and picked out the ones I wanted her to order me, though she rarely did since they were expensive. Likewise, if we went to the closest actual city where there was a Christian bookstore, I would ask to stop in and peruse the selection and listen to music at the listening station. It wasn't just media. I genuinely enjoyed Sunday school in church youth group and sometimes even church. I never liked the participation or group singing aspects, but I enjoyed the actual sermon, the philosophical elements, and especially when I was older, I was very into the Book of Revelations and all of the associated end time stuff. An interest that very easily led me into the aforementioned interest in conspiracy theories, which starts to bring things full circle because it was through my conspiracy theory interest that I was introduced to ideas that much of what we associate in modern day with Christianity was in fact lifted from older pagan religions. Certain conspiracy theories like to hammer in the idea that nearly all religions draw on shared elements and stories to prove the existence of aliens and or the Illuminati, etc. Despite this being the case, there is historical truth to some parts of this, and learning about it definitely solidified some of my own doubts about Christianity that I held while transitioning from believer to Satanist, and then from Satanist to agnostic. So that was a cliff note to journey through my belief system path from Christian to atheist. It's a summary of the how, but obviously the important part is the why. If I was so into the faith I was raised in that I even considered going off to become a pastor after high school, then why would I end up where I am spiritually? I think the simplest explanation is that I never felt the connection to God that so, so much of Christian media and literature focuses on. As a child, prayer felt much like talking with an imaginary friend. I totally believed all of the Bible stories and never felt dishonest when expressing my faith when I was young, but as is usually the case, imaginary friends feel less real as we get older. I was into Christianity deep enough that seeing the hypocrisy and certain aspects of the organized religion part of it didn't really reach me. I heard them from time to time, but just brushed them off. It was very much that lack of connection that really made me move away from the world I was raised in. It's not that I never felt moved by the spirit, as they say. I had moments where it all felt very real, but they were rare and fleeting. Through the church youth group, I attended several large Christian events. Multi-denominational gatherings where speakers and bands would fill a large auditorium and spend hours talking and singing and encouraging the audience to go into the world and preach to your friends and family. There were moments at events like that where I genuinely felt connected to the people around me and the higher power we were all claiming devotion to. Moments where tears came easily along with full body chills, not from anything negative, but rather from the pure emotion of the moment. It was experiences like that which really helped keep me within the flock for as long as I was. The thing is, if the only way you've ever experienced that feeling is through something related to religion, then it's very easy to believe that it is exclusively the result of your religious fervor. I can see how it becomes a high that religious persons can chase, and it's absolutely the driving factor behind the sort of church people that dance in the aisles and speak in tongues and collapse when a pastor touches them. When I eventually began exploring the world outside of religion, I found art and movies and concerts and other instances of such great beauty and revelation 
and I had those same feelings wash through my body, and I recognized it wasn't because I was overcome with the spirit, but because I was a human being just briefly experiencing natural euphoria in a way that temporarily makes reality feel absolutely real. And once you've realized that the Oh, the one thing that made you feel really connected to your religion could actually come from lots of things. Those other little things, like the hypocrisies, inconsistencies, and historical evidence, or lack thereof, start to become very significant. I gave up on God for the same reason I gave up on Satanism. Because when I shouted out to the void, the void had nothing to say. 